thank you for tuning in to my conversation with Daniel and essentially about the course he's doing on Japanese philosophy, an interactive, um, a truly practicing philosophy, which we'll go deeper into. But first, before I set context for that conversation, first some housekeeping. We have the Explorer Weekend, which is a circling weekend coming up this weekend, the 19th and 20th of, uh, let's see, it's March, 19th and 20th of March. This particular weekend is about really, really practicing a radical, I would say a radical listening attunement, a kind of listening that one attunes deeper than just the ear, one's whole being to listening to the other, listening to ourselves, and tuning into being itself. And we can only respond to those aspects of our lives that are distinct, that we can hear. So the deeper our listening, the more being there will be heard in our life. So link for that is below. Also, if you're, work, if you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, I am taking clients. My email, just email me. That is below as well in the show notes. It's or or it's guy sangstock at gmail.com. All right. So this this conversation with Daniel was really great. It had been a long time since I had talked talked with him. And we go pretty deep into the notion of what it what is it to, what is it is philosophy when it's practiced as a way of life. What are the implications of that? Philosophical practice, how to engage with philosophy. And what I walked, I, what I left this conversation with was a deeper sense that philosophy is not a conversation that I could either have or not have. Like, can I have conversations about almost anything? Like, you either have it or not have it. Rather, Philosophy is the conversation in which I am. So to practice philosophically, to engage philosophically, is really to be human. So we go deep into this sense. And then we give an example of philosophical dialogue, what specifically we practice um, Dialectic into dialogos, and uh, that's the second half of the, the the second half of the video, I believe. And so I explain what that is and the the instructions of what we're practicing and why, and then we go we go into it, and it's really it's a conversation about time. We use time as as the as the thing that we're dialoguing about, which is was quite intense. All right, enjoy information about his course and all the courses I mentioned all in the show notes. Have a really good day. Bye-bye. So Daniel, welcome. Hello. I'm happy to be here with you, Kai. Happy to be here with you too. It's been a while. I mean, somewhere between babies and kinds of other stuff um uh i saw you briefly at the uh at the circling dialogos course um mm -hmm. which was really great and we in and i think the last conversation you and i had was oh what was it, it was going into the I, idos right where we yeah where we were watching your conversation with 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 john and Johannes, and then we were kind of just breaking, we were riffing on it. I thought that was really fun. Yeah, yeah. that was that was very good. Yeah. And so you have, in the spirit of all of this, right, you've, you've got a course coming up um, that, from what I understand about it, is really, really looking at this looking at this way that philosophy could be a way of, an actual way of participating in life, right? And 
and you're wanting to in this in this course to um to in some sense really evoke the spirit of knowing through via being transformed by what you're knowing um, mm-hmm. on an interpersonal level, right? To, to, our, to the level with the text, to the level of being, and that what you, you refer to, uh, I thought was pretty astutely before we pre- press record as a fourfold intimacy. Do you remember what, that, what were the four folds again? Yeah, that, so better intimacy to yourself, yeah. better intimacy to other people, greater intimacy to the author, let's say to the sages, which we will read, and then greater, of, uh, greater intimacy to the intelligibility of the world, the geist or the logos, whatever you want to call it, that kind of like ecstatic no thingness that is then always present within a, a di- within a dialogue that is, so to say, happily achieved. And, and, yeah. and this is, in, in specifically the courses, it's, uh, what are you guys calling it? It's something, what's the official title of the course? Uh, I think, I think dial, di- Dialogos with the Japanese House of Being. Uh, Dialogos the, with the Japanese the- House of Being. Nice. Yeah, or or more more and more um, a down to earth title is just introduction to Japanese philosophy. Yeah. So yeah. what we what we will what we, I will I will briefly introduce it. So we will we'll read some of really introductory texts of the Japanese tradition. There's, for example, Tanizaki Junichiro and a text called In Praise of Shadows where it's about this kind of like excessive illumination that um, came with modernity and that really swept over Japan. We will then read two texts also of the Kyoto School, Nishitani and Ueda, yeah. which are about suchness, no thingness, yeah. and have a kind of right, the, the dialogue again between the Western and the Eastern tradition is there really at the foreground. Then we will read um, the dialogue on language from Heidegger with, mm-hmm. which, with the Japanese interlocutor, a very famous text. Um, Guy, you, you also know that yeah. one very well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then we will read two texts from medieval Japan, so medieval Japanese thought from Dogen, the, the founder of Soto Sen, and from Kamo no Chome. Text is called Hojoki or um, the, an account of my hut. He talks about his hut, he, he, he became a recluse yeah. and, and lived in the mountains. And this is a very short text that just describes um, how, how those times were and, and how yeah, Buddhist concepts and re- resonated in that time. Mm. So it's, it's both an introduction to the Japanese tradition and an introduction to dialogical practices. Yeah. Which we will also, which we mostly do in the seminars. So in four of the six seminars, we will do those practices. Mm-hmm. And what they will allow us is that we will have kind of new disclosure of the text that we are reading. Yeah. So we will not just um, talk about the texts in a kind of way that we are all used to, like in a traditional, let's say, seminar style, mm-hmm. but we will practice with the texts. Yeah. We will really try to exemplify, and that's in what you said before, Guy. We will try to exemplify philosophy as a way, not let's say just as a as a knowledge study or so that we get yeah. more knowledge, but that we really practice it and that it becomes a way for us. Yeah. And so yeah, I hope that we 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 will both you will both if you if you join our course that you will more about the Japanese tradition. But that you will also um, strengthen your dialogical capacities, your interpersonal skills, that you, you become a better listener, 
that you become a better um that you notice more in the other persons but also maybe in the texts that would be that would be my my aim right for that course i love the aim i love that <laughs> yeah especially because on some level we have you and i right have touched bases on, on on i would say a very very like it i mean basically i think it's the same the same basic path is in some way what's opening up right now in our time right Mm. is in it's in and it has has something to do with the internet has something to do with this capacity to have um longer form conversations right and it's kind of strangely the strangely this is this is one of the few places that i can think of anyways where technology has made something available that isn't just simply more technology, right? It's like made something more available that's almost the opposite of technology, right? Which is, I don't, I can't think of anything less tech, technological than, um, you know, trying to get, have an intimate relationship with the ineffable, <laughs> right? It's, um, yeah. But there is a, there's, a, there's something emerging between people as a phenomena, like it was as it, as it was emerging, um, the name Dialogos, right, started to, to, to really name something in relationship to that. But it's also an ancient thing. And I think this is the, this is the point, and I can feel in your aims, I feel like that your aim exemplifies what the aim is itself, right? That you have in the aims that you do is already is already is already originating in the in the virtue that I think I hear, which is essentially when I asked you before, how would you know if this course was like f f like fully fulfilled, totally rocked it for you? like all of your intentions that you know about fully manifest. And essentially what I heard you say is people would have, would be more grounded in exemplifying all of those things that show and express a disposition of wonder and reverence. Hmm. There are some of the things that you name like a better listener, like a sense of intimacy, right? Being able to notice more subtleties and distinctions in things, right? Which is really important, I think, to really get about this because when, you, when I say it, it's gonna sound kind of obvious, but it's, uh, but, but my, like most obvious things that, that they're, they're also the most mysterious at the same time, right? Which is, mm. we can only have a relationship with something and make choices about things that are distinct, right? So like the more distinctions that we have, right? Or in, in the more of our ability to make distinctions, right? The, through our perceptions, through our minding, reality and a relationship or whatever is, it, is that we're doing, the, the moment something becomes distinct, a whole world, a whole world of relationship can open up, right? And I think that in terms of practices, this is what I'm kind of getting from, from doing this now for, for quite a while is, is one of the things I'm noticing is in my daily life, um, it's like my ability to hear things that aren't being explicitly said has gone way up, right? To kind of hear actually what is, um, what, what, what withdrawals or false silent in, some, in what something say, somebody is saying or a deeper level concern that perhaps that person couldn't have even have been aware of. Like you can start to like, it's one of the things about philosophy in this deep contemplative reading is it's such an exercise 
in this kind of profound kind of listening. Yeah. Yeah. And this is really what I'm hearing you say is, is the aim of this course is precisely this place where philosophy, right? Um, well, philia, right? The love and intimacy of friendship and fellowship and Sophia, wisdom, right? Come together. Yeah, you put it perfectly <laughs> just now. That 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 would be that would be it's basically just what I, what 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 emerged more or less spontaneously over the last two years or so since I'm I'm participating here. I'm actively in this in this little corner of the internet. Because I I joined one of Johannes's courses on, on Skolé and then then we we then I slowly established then these reading and practice groups, mm -hmm. and doing this on a regular basis really does something with you. It it changes the way you 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 look at the world. You become more. I want to say scholastic, but then I would have to explain it. You become more sufficient. You become more mindful. You become calmer. You become. Um, more, more uh, just intimate with reality and with yourself and with other people and <clears throat> that's also I would say an answer to nihilism and to the problems that are so strong in our time right um, loneliness meaning crisis all these these things that that also by John Vivek is talking about and yeah I just hope that we can right, bring more people into this and that we we become better at doing what we are doing in this sense yeah absolutely and you and and, you... and the, I just want to say right this is again what we're doing is not is not something new in a sense. It's very ancient. It's very old. <laughs> um, whenever I talk to people, and and right, this is this is so a problem today. When 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 people want to help somebody, let's say, they just throw like a bunch of knowledge onto them, mm. and and then kind of everyone knows that this really doesn't help. Yeah, right? but <laughs> that you kind of like right you. You have to ask, you have to be like Socrates. You have to, to give birth to an insight in the other, in the other person by asking questions mm -hmm. and doing this, this gently and mindfully, so to say, to, to, right, to, to be a midwife for the other person. Um, mm -hmm. So they kind of like become aware of maybe where they contradict themselves or where they are maybe fooling themselves, mm -hmm. where they are maybe um, lacking wisdom and um, all these things. And that is also one of the things that we are, we are doing in a sense. And it's a very ancient thing. It's, it's not, not new in any, in any way. Um, and I just hope that we can do it on a on a broader cultural basis in 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 the future yeah That's, that would be my hope totally. Totally. that we we escape we escape um monological ways of thinking and talking yeah and really enter into dialogical modes of being together and being in the world that that is what i would that we rediscover the, the, the abundance of the world and of other people. That that would be my my aim. Right, right, right. And it, and this is part of the Japanese part is something that you've you you got caught by Japanese culture. And if I remember right, in a particular, like a real, uh, like a real difficult or important period of your life, and then you lived in Japan, right, for like a year. You studied over in Japan. Yes. Yeah. I did an exchange here in, in in Japan at the University of Kyoto. Right. And what was? And... 
Could, could you maybe yeah. say a little bit about just a little bit about of I remember I remember some of this, but I I I, I remember like you talked about you were you were kind of having an existential crisis or something at the time personally. And that was, yeah. Is that mm -hmm. Thing, things happen? <laughs> I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about Stuff happens, right? yeah. things, things happened uh, in, in my, in my family. And so, yeah. and yeah, then, then I was kind of like in a very gloomy mood mm -hmm. and I discovered I discovered a kind of Japanese philosophy and Japanese literature, and they that helped me kind of like through that. Really, um, I mean, I also read the existentialists and I read other things, but like, it's just something about the Japanese. So, yeah, in the through that that is that really touched you, especially in the Jap in the Japanese element and. In the, also in, in the way how they did philosophy, not as just, let's say, abstract, empty knowing, let's say, analytical philosophy or so, mm -hmm. where you really try to get hold of propositions, but it's really um, yeah, divor yeah. divorced from, from let's say, yeah. your, your own life, your own existence. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and I was really attracted to this, how, how this lived philosophy, this philosophy as a way of life. Right which was of course also present in in antiquity right think of pierre hardot's works for example um where this gets um, elucidated but i i just that, that this japanese way of doing philosophy just just spoke to me very deeply and also right in for example in the kyoto school where they also bring together east and west in a very fruitful dialogue Mm. yeah and yeah that that just that just spoke to me very deeply and i i really think that that the kyoto school philosophers are, are among really the the greatest philosophers of the 20th century maybe besides let's say heidegger and and yeah. And they, they they were very influenced by Heidegger. Everyone who came after Nishida, the, the first one who kind of like um got this going after yeah. them, most of them studied in, in, in Germany and were very influenced by, by Heidegger. Mm -hmm. And again in Heidegger, it's also it's more about being in the world. It's mm -hmm. about it's about right Dasein, it's about questioning yourself. Mm -hmm. That's actually right. What Dasein is in its essence that we have the, the, <laughs> it questioning is already a question for it. Yes, yeah. Yes, um, and that just that just spoke to me very deeply. And I think what we can learn from the Japanese tradition is really again this more embodied, enacted approach to philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. In this way that, you know, and in, in this way of, I think Gadmer talks about that we, in some sense, we live, we live in our understandings, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's my, my self understanding is the, is the, is, is what myself kind of dwells in, right? And, and in some sense, you know, this interesting thing about, you know, what we just touched on there too, when you brought in this kind of thing that Heidegger does that you could see, you could see how there would be a synergy, right, with Heidegger and the Japanese school. And, and you highlighted this part of where Heidegger talks about, um, you know, the, the, the being of the human being, right, is, I think what he says is, is you are that being for which your being is a question, right? Mm -hmm. You're already always um, that being for which the very being you are is a question of its being, right? This is why this is why we can't just sit there and like maybe like a cat can sit there or something or like a rock can sit there or something. 
Do you try to do that? Like you, you realize like the moment you try to sit down, you realize how much extraordinary existential pressure you're under that just is in the very, it is your existence, this kind of pressure. And it has to do with these core, these core um, uns, unsettledness in the, in the, in, in the, in the, in technically speaking, right, and even just the technical sense of the word, right, that that we aren't things that we can summarize and be done with, right? We are we are always that which we can interrogate, right, and and interrogate into, and therefore, when we talk about philosophy as a way of life, you know, it's interesting because. There are, there are conversations, right, which you can kind of pick up and have and not have, right? But philosophy, in the deepest sense of the word, is not one of those that you could have or not have. It's like, it's like um, philosophy is basically, in some sense, taking up the question in which your, your, your factical, concrete existing, right, exemplifies and evokes right so in some sense philosophy it's not like you can it's not like a, a human being can be a human being and and either ask the question of itself or not hmm. everything that you do is is in some is is already inside of that that relation inside of that question right whether or not we we consciously think about it like that or not so it's really interesting to think about it this way. And I think the spirit of what you're saying, and especially when we start to talk about, highlight the, the, the practice element, like uh, philosophy as a way of life, it's, we, could, we could look at that as a kind of philosophy that we could go into or not, but we could also just as much say that it's taking up our being. It's the most intimate, closest, thing to us right mm -hmm. this very very this very conversation so it's like in some sense this course that you're right and the spirit of this course is is essentially taking up i would imagine what is at the very heart of what it is to be human what it is to be ourselves wouldn't you say yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, right? Whether whether you wanna talk about Heidegger also or or the Kyoto School, that is always at the center, right? What is what is what is this? What we are thrown into this this star, this there, yeah. this strange dimension which we find ourselves in. Right. What 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 are we actually? <laughs> what what is all of this? Um, <clears throat> And yeah, I mean, right when you even when you think about things like language or so, right? The Heidegger says, right, um, Sprache spricht, language speaks, language speaks us. How, 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 when we think about, right, how little we are in control over the things that are going on around us, yeah, yeah, and that we we do not and that's really i think one of the things that will become clear in the practices that we do not have answers to all these questions that are besetting us as human beings but that those are ineffable in a sense and that that what we what we should cultivate is in a sense a kind of Socratic knowing of non-knowing or, or right a learned ignorance, yeah. a kind of humility in front of those questions that we do not assert anything, yeah. but that we we are yeah in a in a constant state of, of non-knowing yeah. regarding to them. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of I, as you're talking about it, that state of not knowing strikes me as is kind of in some sense away from looking at it from a slightly different angle, I think is 
another way of saying that state is the way we are open when we are authentically open. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We, we invite whatever comes, we invite it into our world. Yeah. And yeah. We, 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 we let it come to ourselves. Yeah. And yeah. we do not push it away. We do not reify it or so, or we, 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 right, we answer it in a very quick way so we don't have to think about it. <clears throat> but we just, it's, it's also about maybe saying this simply, just it's about living life authentically. Yeah. It's also, in a sense, what, what Heidegger said in being in time. Yeah. But by, by letting those phenomena really, really concern us and, yeah. and not pushing them away in a kind of inauthentic um, um, way. Yeah. Yeah. Like encircling one of the, I mean, the basic, the basic intention in the practice of circling we say is, is, is practicing um, the challenges um, is, is the profundity upon which we can be with what is. Mm, mm, yeah. yeah. Uh, can how just challenging ourselves like how profoundly can we be with with what is, right? Mm. And it's mm. it's um yeah there's no I don't know if there's there's there is an inexhaustibleness to, to pretty much everything, right? And uh uh that's that inexhaustible moreness at the heart of the most simple activity, of the most simple gesture, of the most simple um, turn of phrase, right? There's a there's a moreness and an inexhaustibility that we can um, somehow through this Socratic humility that you're talking about. It is in in a certain sense is a way of inviting inviting that mm. and being uh you could say a certain kind of emptying of ourselves for it to come in you know, heidegger mm. probably would talk about that as a clearing right and so there's this mm. yeah there's this kind of deep sense of, i'm just really getting that sense of like yeah and it's it's this kind of no, it's classical epistemological sense of knowing through conformity, knowing through contact with reality, right? And that's mm -hmm. why in the in the the further like in, in, in the ancient sense, philosophy and knowledge is you hear it so much more tied to things like initiation rites, right? And yeah. right, yeah. all of these kinds of really intense, like almost religious, religious transformations. And you can hear in that this this understanding, or what's taken for granted is that reality or the world is intelligible, and therefore. To come in contact, to know reality is to come in contact with, with it and to conform and be transformed by it, right? That, mm. that mutual self-reciprocal self revealing, right, is, is the spirit, right, of what is the ancient part of it and it's, it's what's coming, coming full circle into our times and, and what we're participating in now, and what we're seeking to, yeah. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, it's again, it's it's not about that's really what I wanted to avoid, right? In this course, that it's not just knowing about that you can go home and and know about, let's say, yeah. some of the, the the basic core facts of the Japanese tradition, but that you 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 come into this what you just said, guy, right? This this coming into contact or conformity with the fabric or the intelligibility of reality. Yes. Yes. Participate, participatory knowing, perspectival knowing, etc. In, in in John's words. Right. And 
because if we don't if we don't do that then philosophy isn't like then we 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 like reading the kyoto school is it more like a it's more futile um, endeavor in yeah. my opinion if you just study let's say what propositions they held because what they are kind of talking about you can only come to this if you have cultivated that knowing in conformity or in contact otherwise all of this just remains um, a mysterious and um sterile in, in a very profound sense so you you and there there's really where i want to um try doing this with dialogical practices right which is what we want to we want to you want to do you want to do want to also do yeah <laughs> yeah totally and let's let's um yeah let, let's do it two rounds of dialectic um, okay okay cool do you want to explain it briefly yeah, yeah so dialectic is uh, dialectic in a dialogos is a practice that um really john was the first it was the first one that that, that coined the term and and started to articulate the outlines of practice which is still a work in progress um uh so basically as it is right now that dialectic and a dialogos involves a few a few different things one is we're going to pick like we'll pick we'll pick a topic right and it, it could be a virtue it could be something like time it could be something like some 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 something that we want to we want to really evoke and invoke and indwell right yeah and what will happen is that the first person will um will give a proposal and he'll give a proposal like say if it's in a group will it'll give a proposal to the one of the people in the group and 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 it's a very collaborative thing because you could say the job or the role of the person who's receiving the proposal is to really um, in some sense, give birth to this proposal, right? Really draw out to evoke, invoke, amplify, to, to, to listen, listen to like, to understand what he's saying, but in such a way that it's, you could say it's really, really like, like, a, like a midwife would, right? Really brings it out in some sense. And you do that through, you know, you can do that through kind of paraphrasing what you're hearing, making sure that you're understanding it, like re-saying it, maybe in your own words, asking questions. But from, from that first round, you really, like as the listener, you're not bringing in your own thoughts about the matter. You're not like, you're not talking about yourself. You're not relating it to yourself. This is really you, what you are is just the way a midlife would be at a birth. You're all about what what what's emerging in the proposal um and so you really draw it out and maybe the last thing that you say is is is, is you ask so you know like say the topic is is being so what is being like maybe you ask that and then at that point maybe the person could will say being is blah 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 okay boom and then what you do is once that's that's done then the person who was listening, right? What you're going to do is then appreciate what you got out of that. And then also what you found missing in the proposal, right? For you, either missing or mysterious or what you disagreed with or, or whatever, whatever that is. So you're really appreciating what just happened, right? And then like what, what, what's mysterious for me in that or what's incomplete in that or what needs further thought in that is this then once once you articulate that then you're going to go ahead and give your proposal right so like and then you pick up you pick a person who's going to be the listener and the the midwife to you and then you say i propose and what I like, I, what I, I find I like to do is, is actually allow the, 
and this in some sense can happen naturally, but I really find myself in terms of the practice is really abiding to the initial proposal and staying in that. So whatever was mysterious or incomplete is really what my next proposal is, is addressing or is in relationship with. Right. And then, and then the same thing happens. Like the other person goes and evokes and, and then they go, all right. Like, so like, well, what I'm appreciating about this, what, what I'm, what I'm anticipating about this, where this kind of leads to what, what's, what's missing or incomplete for me is this. So I propose being is a jelly bean, right? And then, and so what's interesting about this is like the reason why we could say, and I think it's important, this part of it is important is, is if we say that the logos in the Greek sense, right, is the gathering intelligibility. I mean, it, like the Greeks really kind of considered logos as like the principle of be, right? And you can get why, because anything that you look at, anything that you can think, anything that's kind of anything at all, right, is what it is by it being gathered into, all of its aspects being gathered into itself, and showing itself as that gathering. You could say the logos is that, is that gathering element, that, that, uh, that principle of, of, of you know, what, what makes anything intelligible at all in some sense is intelligible via the logos, right? This is why, this is why the Greeks, when you think about it, for the Greeks, the cosmos, the opposite of the cosmos was not nothing. It was chaos, right? So you really get this sense of the Greek, which is, which is our, you know, if you're a Western, this is, this is the origin of, our, of, our, of all of our thinking is this, is this Greek sense, right? Where it's intelligibility that is, what is, is, is where being is. And so you could say that what we're doing in this exercise in some sense is we're, um, we're proposing things, but we're, we're dialoguing and listening and evoking in such a way that, that we can start to, we can maybe start to feel that thing that's gathering its intelligibility in some sense lift and we become identified with it. And that's where you start to, have thoughts and say things and know things that you didn't know before that you couldn't have done on your own. So mm -hmm. it's, the, it's this contactfulness with that sense of gathering, right? With that sense of logos, which is why it's called dialogos, right? And specifically what we, we the word dialogos is what we're, we're coining the term to mean that moment where you go from dialectic right conversing about propositions to where when it the, the moment the logos catches and it goes into dialogos right where it, it transcends but also includes what it transcends right and you go to a next level and and the, the important thing to get is that and there's humility with this because dialogos is not something that you can do it's not an action that you can take. It's not something you have direct control over. You can set up the conditions for it. You can become masterful at setting up the conditions for it. It's, you can bring in the reverence and all the virtues that it takes to do that. And at the end of the day, it's, if the logos catches, it's not, it's not because of you. It's not because of something you did. It's just like a garden, right? It's a very similar relationship to the, to the way that what the gardener understands is that they can, they can set everything up. They can water the garden. They all that at the end of the day, it's the garden that grows. It's not them growing the garden. <laughs> right. The garden is actually right. It's a good metaphor because you never stop gardening in a sense. Yeah. You always have to take care of the garden. Yeah. And so is it with the proposal, but those are questions or, or virtues or topics that, philosophers have always thought about and, and exchanged their thought about. Mm -hmm. So whenever we finish a round, we are not actually finished. This is a process that could go on indefinitely long. Yes, yes. And there will 
right? Something is then maybe maybe you have clarity, and then at some point maybe there's again mystery, right. and then there will be clarity again. And yeah. this is really this is really an, a, a process that will will never stop. But what you might get is then what guy so so explain what you explain so well, guy that um, you you might get a kind of feeling for the gathering of the logos, a kind of intimacy with that intelligibility that always exceeds us exceeds us, but with which we can participate. Yeah, yeah. And then and not just we ourselves, but also like all the other people. And that's just, again, it's just a very um, great feeling of, of intimacy that can emerge in those, in those gatherings. So um, let's pick a topic. Do you have a topic in mind? I would, I would, I mean, you, you, you brought it up before. What is time? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're gonna go right there. Okay. Time? <laughs> What's time, guy? Tell me. I want to know. <laughs> I listen to you. Yeah. Please, ex- please help me. What time is? <laughs> so how about I tell you what? How about you make the first proposal, um, and uh, I'll be the first deducer. Um, and let's start with let's start with like how about I'd like to sit for about ten minutes in silence and just meditate first. I, I'll I'll put I'll put the video on pause. That's that's good. Yeah. That good good for you. Okay, cool. Yeah, I will I will also pause. All right. Okay, now that we've sat for 10, 10 minutes and some mindfulness and some centering. Would you like to make a proposal, Sir Daniel? Time. Time is... Time is somehow the the roominess, the spaciousness of being itself or reality. Time Time, time is the roominess and the spaciousness of being itself. Yes. And that discloses our how intricate the human being is participating in time. Uh, so, so time is the roominess and the spaciousness of being itself. And that that does this time. But also this, right? <laughs> oh, and this. Yeah. Yeah. Say more about this and that. What are you doing when you say it looked as though when you okay, time, what is time? And you it looked like you entered into something and then you you found it and did this. Time is a right, it's a, it's, it's the movement. Of, of how reality is unfolding. Time is the movement of how reality is unfolding. And we'll go, go back for a second. You talked about what was the relationship to the human being in time? Do you remember that? I didn't, I didn't want to miss that. Yeah, time is not right. It's it's tied to what even with we are doing here right now. It's it's never static. 
or like a container or so but it's always it's always dynamic it's always ecstatic as well yeah it's, it's always dynamic it's and dancing ecstatic. it's dancing dancing <laughs> it's, <laughs> time is a dancer <laughs> ah time is a dancer it's dynamic it's it's dynamic and ecstatic this ecstatic what was it about you said ecstatic and you put your hands up here you went dynamic here and then ecstatic here. Mm. What's the relationship between the, it's, it's dynamic as ecstatic. Mm. That seems, I, that sounds, I think I'm hearing that is essential. Mm. The time as the dancer is that there's, it's fair to say something like time mm. is, the dynamic ecstatic dancing that isn't a container, right? It isn't static or is it isn't a static container, but it's a dynamic, a dynamic ecstatic dancing. Mm. Mm. Yes, but it can also, it's right, what, what bugs me a little bit with when we say dynamic and ecstatic, we, we think that it, it can also have a negative dynamic, right? It can also, it mm. can also be a, not just, not just, let's say a dance that's smooth and that flows, mm. but one that can also be um, horrendous, let's say. Yeah. Boring. Yeah. <laughs> Dry. Yeah. Rough. Yeah. That, that is also implied in there yeah i think so the so the dynamic and the dancing and the ecstatic so time is a dancing right mm. that has this characteristic of, of dynamism and ecstasis and then as you thought about it something bugged you something bugged you about it and then you said yeah, but it's also not just dancing. <laughs> it's dancing. Right? It's boredom. Yes. All phenomena are included. I'm taking is included in this dynamic. So time is also um, this lack of lack, lack, this, this lack of harmony. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So there's a. I is think it, is there an ambi I, I sense. I sense. Essentially, I think if I'm hearing you correctly, you're highlighting that time includes both good and bad. Yes, depending on on how we we are participating with time. Okay, so, so depending so, on so, how so, the, so, the human being is 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 doing in this dance of, right. of being, okay. which is time. So 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 there's a way that there's a way mm. that what I want to I want to highlight. So it's like time is like is that dynamic dancing, dynamic ecstatic dancing that that the human being can participate with. Yes. Right. It's a Yes, we can, we can join that dance. We can join the dance. So that's one way we could participate with the dance. Or we, or we say, 
or we do not join the dance, something like that. <laughs> is it fair to say then, that then, if we don't join the dance? Is it fair to say that that's a form of dancing? With time, is we we dance by not joining the dance? Is is it is that itself dancing? Yes, I think so. In in the definition I gave, yeah. If if time is always dancing, yeah. Then I think that that that's fair to say. Yeah, yeah. Time is always dancing. Therefore, the human being part can participate with time, and its way of participating in time is it. Uh, Say, is it is it that it's it's way the human being's way of participating with this dynamic, its way of dealing mm. with it? Does it have, does it does that influence the way time is, or is that just influence the way time is for us and the way we time out? Hmm. No, I think that is then time as well. Even if we fail to 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 dance with time, yeah, then it is also time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think I think what I'm I think what I'm asking about is it seems clear that time, the dynamic of time, like mm. affects us. Right? And the way we participate in time affects us. But does our way of participating affect time itself? That's what I'm wondering. That's what's. I think so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't think there. There's a, a kind of like a, a time itself somewhere, like a, a true time. Even if our, let's say, our comportment to time is insufficient that is still that is still time itself yeah. it's it's just realizing itself in this modality of let's say boredom yeah or this that that time becomes excruciating also yeah. or insufferable something like that so time is time is is all of those things it's the the most the most um gracious and the most ecstatic and the most chirotic maybe but it's also the most desperate and the most um gloomy and the most boring right it's it's all of that yeah yeah so it's essentially is it fair to say wherever there is dynamic of any kind, there is time. Yes. Huh. And when the human being comes into relationship with time and the way we participate with time, that coming into participation is already time. Yes. Mm. Mm. And and somehow, 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 though, there's a way that the way we participate with time affects the way time is. Yes. But that is, that is also time. That is also time. Yeah. I'm just curious now if we were to ask, if I were to ask the question, Daniel, what is time? 
I said what right, I said the in the beginning the the roominess or the spaciousness or so of of being, and what we did right was or what you helped me with was kind of like elaborating all those dimensions of of being, yeah, of, of our existence, and they are all they they all included in that. Yeah, I don't think I don't remember you saying anything about being in the beginning. I think I, I think I said the the roominess of being, didn't I? Oh, I thought you meant. I thought the. I thought you said the roominess was the time of time. So, oh, the roominess of being. Okay, got you. Okay, got you. Yes. <laughs> of of reality or, yeah. or of of this this dimension which we participate in. Yeah. Yeah. This there this here whatever we want to call it right. um so yeah we we uh, even i just got a kind of like a depth moment here in my when i looked at my hands mm. they were kind of like they were kind of like disclosing a depth that, that was um so time cool. did something mm. so so time is is how we yeah we, right, we, we also say it's a movement it's an opening and a contracting it's yet yeah, it's it's how we it's opening contracting it's how we hold ourselves in the world somehow yeah right so it's opening and contracting and it's how we hold ourselves in the world somehow mm. yeah and it's the roominess of being and i heard you say it's the roominess of being it's the it's the dynamic and the ecstaticness of being and that it's a dancer. Does that still, does that still true? Is, is, is. Yes. Is, I, I did I, this all the right. time. I, I did this, those, I did those movements yeah. either in my hands or, or a little bit with my body all the time. It has to do with, with dancing and, and um, kind of like reflexing or so. Yeah. Um, in, but it's not, it's, I think it's not, it's not subjective in this sense, or it's not, it's not just for us, but yeah. It, it is it is somehow how reality unfolds time provides this room for how things unfold and are this movement at the same time ah. something like that it's like there's a there's a room and the room for which and the room means so to happens. say Yes, it's it's both it's both the space and the spacing. Yes. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's both the noun and the verb. It's the noun and the verb, mm. right? Mm. Right. So is yes. it is it? Am I hearing a? I'm hearing a unity starting to unfold through all of this. Mm. Or mm. am I hearing that? Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Something about something about. The space and the spacing, mm. right? The dynamic, the participating with already, already a form of participating, mm. ecstaticness and a dynamic that even mm. its lack of dynamic is part of its dynamic. Mm. There's a there's all these things going around like this, right? 
there's a unity I'm sensing that's gathering around around this. Yes. Yeah. It's yes. I think the unity maybe maybe I can pull it succinctly, right? It's it's yeah. like the it's the the unity between the space. The right time is time is the space and the spacing. Space and the spacing. But it's also how the the human being is again dancing, holding, doing is in that space. That's also discloses, let's say, how the the space spaces. Well, yeah. how how being is how reality realizes itself yeah, yeah. so time is, it, is, time is somehow say, the movement it's say, it's yeah. gonna finish that la last thing it's how reality mm. realizes itself mm. that's what I, I just wanted to pull out that phrase yeah that's what you're the... saying is, is is what you're saying is is time the way reality realizes itself? Hmm. Time is the... Time, time always comes with a quality. Mm. And when I talked about spaciousness or so, it, it, it right, you, you can have you can you can have no time and then every, right your reality feels very narrow and your possibilities are you you think you can't do anything your possibilities your projects they are kind of like going nowhere yeah and then your your let's say your existential room your yeah. your da your your being there is is kind of contracted yeah but it can also right it, what john would call right the reciprocal opening right this is kind of like, and then we dance and dance and it becomes larger and larger and great. And, right. <laughs> and then, <clears throat> and then suddenly, right. You, you have, you can dance everywhere. You, it's, it's like, yeah. it's like you can, you can drive wherever you want because right. now, now everything's open and free. And in that sense, right. um, time is, time is that it's both. It's that, that opening and that closing yes. can be both of that. Yeah. But it is at the same time how I'm kind of like how, how I'm doing, right? Because when I'm when I'm doing not so well, then reality is like this. And when I'm doing good, reality is like that. Um yes. so it, it involves the human being. Yeah. So there's, there's something important there. That it, it, so, and you said this earlier too, and I think that's a, it's a thread through this that I'm hearing is it's not like the, there's just time in itself out there somewhere. It involves the human being. Mm. Yeah. And it's somehow, maybe we could say it's, it's the, it's the sense of how real, or it's the meaning of how reality realizes itself. Yeah. The so time is the meaning of how reality realizes itself. Mm. So time is the meaning of how reality realizes itself. Right. Mm. Right. Anything more you want to just say about this? This, this essential. No, I think I think I'm good. <laughs> okay, cool. So, 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 Daniel, I'll ask you again. What is time? Just in summary. 
time is yeah, the, the meaning or the sense of how yeah let's let's put it like this how reality realizes or how this being there dimension opens contracts unfolds and that unfolding is is very intimately connected to the behaving of the human being the behavior of the human being yes so i just want to get that so time in summary you're saying time is i forgot the first part the meaningfulness is the meaning some of some of the sense the sense of being the sense of reality the kind of ah, okay time is the sense of reality yeah yes you but you can be you can be deprived of sense and when you're deprived of sense you're also deprived of time yeah in a sense. yes but you can you can have fullness of sense and then you also have the fullness of time right yeah there's this this, this deep weddedness somehow of mm. space and time, mm. right? Pregnancy, yeah. Pregnancy, yeah. Time can be pregnant with itself and be pregnant with sense. Mm. It, can, it can be deprived of sense and deprived of time. Mm. Okay, so what is time? We were just to summarize it. Time is the all right, the, the ongoing sense or sensing of. This reality realizing this strange, right? This strange thing that we call the it's it's a verb and a noun at the same time. Yeah. So time is the sense. And, and time is time is kind of like how this this unfolding of this noun and verb at the same time. Yeah. This reality. Is the, is, time is the time is the is the unfolding of this noun and verb at the same time. Yeah, time and, is how how that's how, how that's doing. So to say. yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So is it fair to say? Are you saying just to summarize it? So you're saying like time is the is the sense of how the noun and verb are unfolding at the same time. The dynamic. Yes, how how that. Yes. How how that how that process, how that how that's going. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, cool. Very cool. We all right. So now I'm gonna move in, I'm gonna move into appreciation and anticipation. So the whole process of deducing that in itself for me is what I was appreciating, the slipperiness of it. Like this, where you, where we kind of, where you ended up, like is this kind of, oh yeah, time is, is the ongoing, right? Of the, of the noun and the verb, right? It's how that's going, that it's going, the dynamical, sense sense of noun verbing and i pre i really appreciated just the way how slippery it was and finding the through line through all of that right of um which i'm 
I'm imagining as I'm appreciating it, I'm noticing this awareness of that this itself is that's trying, yes. right? This dynamic, mm. right? This dynamic, this dynamic dancing. And that there's, and I appreciate it, that there's something, that there's something essential between time and the human being. Yes. Right? Something essential between, I appreciate that. And that, that the way that the human being participates is itself time, but also the way it participates, it, it, it is itself time, and that way of participation affects the way time times. So this dynamical sense, yes. right? Yes, and, yes. And you said this, um, the, yeah, this connection between this connection between sense and time. When sense is full, right, time is full, right? When when sense is is, is evaporated or little time is evaporated. There is a, there is this coupling between sense and time, right? So like this kind of dynamical sense of the way verbs and nouns are interchangeable all the time. This dancing, yeah, this dancing, interesting. Right, it's especially and that, that's the last thing I would say to my proposal, but especially in how, how this, this, this dimension, right? What Heidegger called the da, the, the there, this, yeah. Oh, yeah. this is not, right? This is not a static noun, yeah. but that's also always verb. It, this dimension is, is so the there in all the same, at yeah. the same time. Yeah, yes. So, so re yes. reality, and just like as reality is not a static, it's, it's just a non all reality is there, but reality is always realizing itself, is always unfolding. Yeah. And time is some, the, the, yeah, the sense time, the sense, the time sense of this is some of how we can, we can feel into that and we can, we can dance with that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, I just wanna wanna maybe say, on on your appreciation, I I felt understood, mm. and I felt heard by you, and mm. I I I wanna thank you for your for your inducing and listening. Oh, totally. Yeah, absolutely. So, so many different threads that we could take on on those, and I would say that the I, see if I can articulate what. What remains mysterious for me is this way that time somehow is the dynamical sense of everything. Yes. It, in, including its nounings and its verbings, right? It is that sense, right? And it, it so 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 on one hand, time is like on, on one level, it's only it's the only thing going on, right? It's the going on of going on. Yet this that the very this what lies mysterious is that that being the case, and it's so difficult to talk about, like mm -hmm. this. And so this, I think this has something to do with what I want to propose, right? I want to propose that time time is the way that emptiness is empty. Time is the way emptiness is empty. And how, how I want to start to kind of get at that is that 
you know, just if we kind of bring it more from our own sense of things, I, time is somehow that way that my whole being is oriented and oriented by the anticipation of what's the future. Mm. Right. And, and that there's, there's a, there's a past, right. In which, and that future is by definition, doesn't, ha- it, it isn't right. So it's like on one level, it's very tied to this emptiness, yet it's constituting of everything for me. Like, mm. like, like I'm already anticipating on some sense you're listening, which is giving the facticity of my speech, right? That I'm, if my, if my sense, if my sense of the future after I get done talking was that you hated me, my, my speech would, if it was there at all, it would be probably at a different tone and everything. So on some level, it's this future, that element that is so determinative of everything that I would call actual, right? And con- mm. that constituting of, of it. And, 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 and yet that very, that very response to that constituting, right? To this future that isn't um, creates a past, right? <laughs> that is the past by virtue of it not being here. Can I can I just yeah. stop you? So yeah. you just you just did this, yeah. You kind of like you 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 went forward a little bit, and then you did this. So so you were really kind of like again you you were exemplifying a, a movement oh yeah yeah this looping this turning oh i love that yeah you're right <laughs> i love what does it feel like i love what i didn't hear myself say <laughs> <laughs> let me see if i can not say that again um the the oh yeah that it's just Well, I think it exemplifies what I was trying to bring into with words, but my hands, I think, were more telling of what was being said, right? Mm. This, oh yeah, that this right here, so this movement right here, there's a way in which it's already underway in the loop, right? That this turn, mm. right? It's like, it, I, it, there's this way where it's just like, oh yeah, it's, I'm expressing the turn from inside out of the turn by turning. And that that mm. turn then does something where it relates to itself again and does another turn. And I think that there's something about the dynamic of time, right? That has to do with that turning. Mm. And And there's something about there's something about that turning that turns in in some sense this sense of emptiness, right? Um, seems to be required for it to turn, right? It's like like future, past, present. Like there, you know, that whole thing about like where you can't even find the present because by definition, the present is, is the thing that's already gone. It's like, so at what point does the, the future stop and the present start and past begin? It's like, you can just keep dividing that infinitely. And there's a, there's a nothing there at all in some sense, yet a dynamic, mm. a full dynamic is going on. That's time. And I, I want to say that it's interesting. I want to say now, actually, do what do you hear? Um, I, want to be I think sure. when you did this, right? It's like time is always 
slipping. Yeah. It's in a sense, it's slippery. You even said this when in during my appreciation stage, we, we, we were kind of like there was something slippery in that that whole thing. Yeah. Um, and because that that movement is so dynamic that you you can never grasp it. You and that was in a sense that was for me exemplified when you did this <laughs> with your with your fingers in a sense. Yeah. This yeah. this kind of like I can't hold it. I can't like <laughs> or I can't I can't point at it. It's it's like it's always it's always moving away. Yeah. Um so yes, how, how does that how does that sound to you? Oh yeah. It, it sounds, yeah, it's ungraspable. It's time is precisely that which never is become something. It's very much like being in that, in that way. Mm. Like, mm. Time itself is nothing temporal, right? Like it really constantly slips out of any kind of grabbing hold of it right yet mm. man does it do a lot of work for not being able to point to it and becoming something it's constituting that element of mm. constituting yet that very lacking of being able to make it a thing constituted, right? I yes. think it's somehow the way that it's linked to emptiness and it's dynamic. Mm. 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 What? Maybe let's go a little bit back to 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 this movement you exemplified and you 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 have really had a moment where you were where i felt you had an you, you had an insight yeah. how, how did that how did that feel like not in a, not in a mm. in an intellectual way but but in a in a, like in, in an embodied way how did that alter or change your relation to time Oh, it's full. It was, it was a non-grasping fullness. Mm. Like that turn. And I think it was that point when I was turning where you mm. paraphrase my hands, basically where you went this, or I went this and then this and that mm. turning. Um, yeah. What does the turning do? What? Yeah. Well, I could say that it, the, the turning is what I find myself in. I don't think mm. it's something I'm doing. The dynamic of turning, I would, I'd venture to say is this is time. And it's got this turning it's the ability to turn back in on itself and relate to its own turning. And perhaps those are the dimensions of past, future, present time. Those are the, those are the dimensions why those things are always the case with time for somehow these three things are, oh yeah, it's interesting. There is a way, oh, it's interesting. Okay, so. In other words, what I heard you say about what I said is that what that felt like, it felt like a dynamic not suffering. It was a, it was mm. a turning. Mm. It was a turning. It was an involvement. It was full, right? And this, that this relationship between future, present, and past is one of turning. Right, because they just when you talk about one, it, it points to all the other ones and not to itself, and then the other, and it continually does that, and so it's this 
it's this turning referencing itself relation that kind of unfolds i guess everything that we call anything at all right is yet it it time itself withdraws constantly in nothing that is in time yes so what i heard you say is that time is itself turning yeah all the time in all directions from and from from backwards to forwards from forward to backward um so and what is turning is what you said is anything is it's, it's like Yeah. all that is all that is yeah yeah that's that's turning and that turning is time yeah yeah and that that turning when that turning what i heard you also or what i saw you right mm -hmm. the more you were kind of like falling or let it, letting yourself into that movement mm -hmm. the more the more good, the less, but right, the less suffer, but right, you said suffering, the more, the more good you felt about huh. that, huh. Huh. that movement, that activity. Yeah. Yeah. The letting, right. The letting, letting myself. Mm. Letting, letting yourself yeah. turn or yes. time. <laughs> And I just got this sense of that there's perhaps like something like when the self fully lets itself turn, that's where it touches, the, it becomes time, right? Where, where time and the mm. self become like this. That makes a lot of sense to me in a big way. And mm. this letting itself and this dynamicalness of time, And it's, it's, dy it's, it's dynamical turning, it's referencing itself, pointing back to itself, referencing itself, going back to itself, um, letting everything that is be the way that it is as it's is, right? Yes. yes. This, this. Um, I like this, by the way. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's almost, right? it's almost, you, but maybe to say right you're clearing the clearing <laughs> totally. totally yes yes it's like so somehow i'm getting a sense of like a the center of a center of a flower that blooms right there's a mm -hmm. kind of there's a way where the flower blooms and as it wilts away somehow its flowers reveal the center but if you remove all the flowers there is no center there there's this something going on about time where time isn't the things in time right mm. it's the center in which those things blossom mm. yet that center um is only the center by it, its aspects of blossomings right this so it's kind of like uh It's this, yeah, that kind of blossom. Like time is the blossoming of emptiness. There, okay, that's what that's my final proposal. Time is time is okay. So, but now you said time is the blossoming of emptiness. Yeah. Do you want to add anything to that proposal? <laughs> then I will go to appreciation now. But what I really appreciated about your, your proposal was this dynamic quality that you really you really exemplified just in your in your being. You 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 didn't just say that say time is the blossoming of emptiness. You you were 
the blossoming of emptiness. Yeah. And yeah. that's really the, sen the sense I got from your proposal. First, right, by going into this movement of future and past and past and future in this present that is always slipping away. Right. And then... And, and really dancing also in this movement. And you call this this turning, right? Yeah. Right? Right. This. right. <laughs> um, and that, let's say that you said it like two minutes ago, that easing of all that is, yes. is if it is time, then it's like a blossoming. Right, right. Right. If it is true, if it is, if time right. is realizing its own time hold or so, then then it's 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 then things are blossoming, like things are just as they are. Right, right. Um, so. Yeah, and I, I just appreciate how you, how you, from this dance, and then at the end of your proposal, you came, you came really, first you did this, <laughs> that, that was, that was, that was lovely. And then you came to the example of a flower, mm. um, which is very poetic, I think. Mm. Um, mm. Because a flower is so, let's say, essentially timing, mm. Mm. and and so also subjected to time, yeah. so in, in intricately connected to time. Yeah. That I think it's, and it's spring. Um, yeah. So it's the perfect season for that. <laughs> so I think it it was a it was a wonderful example. Mm. Hmm. Thank you. Do you want to go? Do you want to go go another one? Do you want to say what what you found? What what's mysterious? What's missing? Oh, shall we do another round? Okay. Hey, do you want to? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> my God. <laughs> It may be getting late. <laughs> we should probably we should but probably call it. It, it is yeah. get it is getting a little bit late. Yeah. 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 Um, no, no, I I I will say I will say what. Yeah. So I would say now what's mysterious, and um, then we would finish the round, right? What's mysterious? Or missing. Yeah, I would I would I would not be very interested in also in what this turning is. So what what really the human being can I mean I I, we pointed to this, but it's like how did really the and and right then if if that because that turning seems to be something has something to do with also with human freedom and human agency and maybe also human virtuosity. So if we if we can. That is almost there is almost a virtue character. If we if we do this right, yeah. this turning, yeah. If we if we are not, let's say, oblivious of that, yeah. how how, yeah, being is time and time is being. Yeah. But but if we if we if we really let us right this letting that that you also said right if we really let ourselves into this, yeah, and and that there seems to be that. This then, and then then again, re reality 
or we participate intimately with how reality blossoms, yeah. Then, then that is also virtuous. So this turning, yeah. this this activity that, and when, when we when we do part, when we participate well with that activity, then that is an act of virtue of virtuosity. Oh. So this whole this whole ethical dimension that 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 would be I think that is still mysterious or missing yes. from the last two rounds. Right, right. The ethical dimension. Oh yeah, it just opened up right there. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, well, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna halt on the temptation to dive in again. But yes, that. That, that sense of uh, I'm I'm I really appreciated the way you picked that up because there is that element of where maybe something like the self is the after image in the retina of the eye of time's dynamic, right? And that when that mm. after image that I base my whole life on, right? can kind of come notice and come back to that dynamic. It, it, mm. I'm open, like it opens in that way. And you realize that even that dynamic was a blossoming and it kind of blossoms. And so that, but there is this element of freedom there of, that does open up this ethical dimension of time where time in some sense can be chosen on or an aspect of it can be chosen right i maybe this is where, where you get into some of that language um that existential language of like the de de declaration right this this being language where one declares something mm. right uh and brings it into being in its declaration right maybe there's something going on there with this dynamic of time right that has this more yeah, i like i like even i like even the de declaration and maybe it's not related but clarification so then we, that, that 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 reality like like it's like i'm i'm, <laughs> I'm cleaning my glasses and so yeah. <laughs> absolutely so, so there's a clarification so a kind of an opening yeah um yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, my friend. It's good. That, that was a that, that was, was a great demo. Was great. 